All right. Thank you all so much for the kind introduction. And uh, as I mentioned, so I'm, I'm really sorry. My voice is going to come and go as I'm recovering from a cold. So bear with me. If you don't hear me, just let me know in the chat and I'll, I'll try to fix that. Uh, <coughs> so my name is Sarah el -Gibali. And as mentioned, I'm a co-founder for Fairpoints. I'm also a project leader for metadata and curation at the SciLife Lab. And today I'm going to go briefly on uh, introduce Fairpoints and then talk a little bit more about our uh, work together with the, your community on, on open and fair uh, um, re for beginners. So as mentioned, Fairpoints is an event series. And uh, basically, before I start on, on delving deeper, I want to just lay an introduction to what FAIR is. And FAIR, the findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, that terms were coined in 2016 in a landmark paper that summarizes the fundamental concepts on how to improve the infrastructure to enable the reuse of data and provide guidance to enhance the reusability. <coughs> And as such, they are a set of principles. They define the best practices they do, uh, and, uh, and ways for data to facilitate discovery and access by both humans and machine. But they are not essentially a set of rules or how to's in order to do that. It's not a standard either. It's more of a process and a vision. So, and this is why when we talk about fair, we usually talk about levels of fairness. And I know this all sounds really nice, but when we get to the details of it, we oftentimes hit the question of, do we have a good overview or grasp of how these principles translate to real life? What do we need to understand and how do we actually make it and take it out of reality, uh, make it a reality and take it out of the realm of theory and guidelines into applications and developments. And <clears throat> we also realized that the applications and developments of FAIR principles are very rapidly evolving. There, there's a lot of uh, developments happening and it's expanding beyond just data as it originally um, was uh, was presented. But it, 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 we see this fair for software, fair for workflows, fair for uh, different items, uh, different types of research outputs. So there's a lot to, to consider here and a lot happening in the scene. And that's what inspired us to start thinking about how do we explore a different approach of understanding what the FAIR principles mean to the community and how are they applied in reality? So what are people doing and that is considered FAIR, right? And we launched FAIR points in response to that and we aim to basically <coughs> Apology. So in, in response to that and, and to tap into the expertise of the research community and the wider research ecosystem. So it's not just researchers, but everybody in that ecosystem in order to offer a framework for these conversations to happen. So that's fair points. It's like a platform for these conversations to happen, bringing people from different places. And in addition to that, we want to document what we know. So tapping into the expertise is not enough, but dissemination of the knowledge is also an important factor. So how do we capture this knowledge and how in, in a more dynamic or flexible and accessible way to provide conversation summaries and training material that can be used uh, by the community? And this to really highlight what is the pragmatic solutions that are being developed everywhere and how can we harness that knowledge and we cannot do this in silos we cannot talk about a fair in silos in terms of discipline or geographic location or so on so we need to find those solutions we need to pull our knowledge together learn from each other bring in the diverse community from all over the place across disciplines geographic domains and boundaries and so on into understanding what FAIR really means in that sense. So this is this is the background of how FAIR points came into the, uh, came, um, it came by. And 
we have different two different things I'm gonna I'm gonna describe today. We have events and we have projects. So let's first of all start with events. And with the events that we have, one type of event is community discussions, where basically we're creating this platform to have the community discussions take place in where we come together, share knowledge, share our experience, identify solutions and produce output. So if you think more of a working group type of uh, uh, um, <coughs> type of meetings, that's the what we uh, see as community discussions. People get together, discuss and provide uh, an output to capture those discussions. And uh, this is very much what we're looking for into creating a fair and open training material for beginners. So uh, to develop the materials for young adults, uh, people who are still in school, like I think age 15 onwards, uh, also for undergraduates and members of the general public. So, um, and we, why we we thought fair and open go hand in hand, right? So fair and open need to, uh, in, to they're not again that we're not siloed. They're not too different uh, or or too dramatically different um, concepts here, but they need to build on each other and connect each other, and that's why we're looking into teaming up with your community to create. A better science for ev for everyone, and to build that culture early on as well. And um, we're looking for the training material to motivate students to to do to conduct methodologically sound research, and to help them avoid the pitfalls associated with things like lack of transparency and reproducibility and so on. So that's where we believe that. Uh, introducing those concepts early on will have a major impact on future researchers. And it also helps ally the anxieties of the general public of not understand, of, of, of um, creating a better understanding of what open science mean, what, how does that relate to their data, how does that re relate to their activities of citizen science and so on. So we want to have a framework and provide them material to encourage students to reflect more generally on openness and fairness and transparency in research, all the while within the confines of respecting the rights of individuals and communities. So um, before I go into details on what we envision as deliverables, I want to have a sense of room here. I would love to take a minute to go do a little Mentimeter here to see who's with us and if you can um, Please join us in, <coughs> on mentimeter.com and use the, this code 8448110. And I'm going to give it a few minutes here. Uh, my screen, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the screen with the results? Someone can give me a heads up or oh, thumbs up. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, so the next question, thank you so much for filling this in. We can continue to add, um, add answers. And the next question I want to uh, ask you, does it, what is your experience with delivering training or teaching?
Um, and when you teach, uh, who's the main audience? And feel free to add like uh, uh, words here to uh, teach um, school aged uh, folks or undergraduates or other types of audiences that we might not uh, have considered. Interesting. Thank you. And when you're teaching, and has any of you had experience of delivering teaching in open and fair practices in, in that material? Right. And now the last question I'm going to ask for this, those who might be students in the room. Um, what is your experience in being uh, coming across open and fair in your curriculum? And I, I will share all the results after the session. I'll send it to Emma and um, hopefully you can reflect on that. All right. <clears throat> Thank you all so very much. This has been uh, very interesting to see. And um, yeah, so back to the deliverables that we wanted to um, I wanted to present, talk about a bit more. When we say we want to create um, material for training, right? So what what exactly are we looking at for here? So we have two types of training. We have two. One deliverable is um, using structured data and schemas to create something like questions and answers. And the questions that, that people can Google or search for in Google and get the most common uh, answers from. And to be highlighted as the you know the first uh, the first top answers that are gen coming from the community, from the experts. So we're looking for things like um uh, what we call educational flashcards that are developed by google and basically for someone who would uh, for example would uh, ask a question what does open science mean what does fair stand for and have uh, and the first uh, result in, in the google page to to outline what are the experts saying and how much do they agree on that so uh and and we're working in, on a set of Q and A's for for this, and by using structured data, we are able to have the questions that are collected by the community. So we do this work in in working groups, and we transform them in schema.org type uh, quiz for those of you who might be interested in digging a bit deeper into this. And basically, it shows up as Q and A. So uh, if you go back here, if you try it yourself, you go to Google and say, "What is?" The ratio of surface energy to surface area. You see a, a an example of, of, of how Google renders it. So this is to help us uh, to to kind of identify the most principles of, of information or or bytes of information that we want to get across to to people who are interested in in in, in it, and have that more findable and more discoverable by leveraging Google indexing in, in, in that manner. So this is very uh, new and um, the, the concept of Google educational uh, flashcards has been just recently launched like a couple of months ago. So we're still working on that and we'd love to hear from the community. What, what do you think are the main 
points that we need to get across? What are most likely things people would search for? And how would you answer that? And then the other deliverable that we're creating is um, is having is um, <clears throat> is creating slides in script that accompanies those slides. And by script, I mean narratives, not coding scripts and narratives that the trainers and teachers could use to deliver um, the uh, to deliver the, the information and deliver those um, educational uh, events. So this is to lower the barrier of not having uh, of not having to do or create your own training material from scratch. Uh, how in, in going uh, for school teachers to have ready-made material that is by experts in the communities and people who are involved in open and, and fair to say this is what we think would be the most relevant things for the audience and this is how we can deliver deliver it right so we want to lower the the barriers of adoption we want to make it easy to actually deliver those um educational uh events um and and that's the idea to have a uh, set of slides, set of uh, uh, of uh, scripts or narratives that accompany in them, and we're open to to uh, to welcome. We welcome all of the input, and we welcome you into the community to help us create this. And if you want to know how uh, how often we meet, and we have check ins, we have different types of formats of co working events. So sign up to our Google Calendar. And you're more than welcome to our Slack. Uh, so this is just one type of the events that we have. And we also have, um, as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the presentation, we will want to know what are the experts or the people who are involved in uh, in FAIR or, or involved in the, in the actual practical manners of, of research. How are they uh, implementing FAIR? And for, to that end, we have keynote presentations. And that's where we tap into the expertise available by delivering events from keynote speakers, where we highlight the practical solutions of fair implementation from their field. And then we capture those conversation summaries from the events and create like a bite-sized reusable um, uh, material, which is also uh, uh, structured and interoperable by the use of, uh, of uh, structured data and schema. And, and, um, and basically, we capture the pragmatic and practical advice that is offered by the, uh, the speakers and, uh, and also uh, the conversation, like the Q&A sections of the, of the events and, um, and uh, present them on our websites. If you're, uh, if you're interested in seeing some of those conversation summaries, uh, you can go on our websites under resources. And what you see is an HTML rendering of the structured schema that captures um, this material. And I'm happy to dig deeper into this and how we do it, but probably not today, uh, not right now, but uh, happy to take any questions uh, later. And, and as an example of, our, of these events, we have one coming up as well on the 30th of, of November, where Dr. Yi Ping, is, who is currently a senior principal research scientist from the University of Alabama and supports the NASA integration and in, in interagency implementation and advanced concepts team, the IMPACT project. And Dr. Peng, during the session, we will learn about the FAIR dataset quality information guidelines. So, and what do we actually mean by quality information for datasets? And what is needed to capture and describe datasets in a manner that is consistent with the FAIR guiding principles? And how do we integrate the that information to facilitate maximum discovery and reuse of the data set. So if you're interested in that, please register to our uh, upcoming event and have a look at Dr. Peng's latest uh, publication on this subject. Um, and I, I can I can say to the, today, actually, it's the first time I introduced this, our new upcoming type of events that will start uh, from January 2023 which will be a series of uh, Ask Me Anything uh, event style, where we bring subject matter experts from the Research Data Alliance together with the um, representatives from EASC Infrastructure. So we're talking with the people who are 
um, basically behind the concepts and ideas and, and things like uh, fair digital objects, what is uh, PIDs and kernel, uh, kernel um, structures, together with people who are um, involved in the infrastructure building and the application part. And these uh, series of events will be moderated by community members. We, and this, is, this will be a paid opportunity for folks who are interested to come and interrogate our speakers <laughs> and, and, and uh, ask them questions uh, in, a, in a nice, more relaxed fashion, which is um, also to lower with, with less jargon, more more uh, um, adapted for a diverse aud audience from different disciplines and then research. So this is to come together and really talk about FAIR from different points and have the community closer to the people who are, you know, behind the FAIR and the infrastructures and so on. So if you want to learn more about this, and we, we would really love to have more researchers as moderators to help us with this and as i said this these will be paid opportunities for moderators so uh stay tuned sign up to our newsletter you'll hear more about it um and so apart from this event uh, series that we uh we uh have i've just talked about uh, we also have projects so we have different types of projects running and again <clears throat> I'm going to give a couple examples here today. Um, and one of it is uh, we're building an open and fair research forum. And this is what, how we see this is more like um, a community hub. So people from across disciplines, across geographical boundaries, uh, people can come and share information and knowledge and locate topics that are related to their interests on open and fair practices. Um, so this is to kind of facilitate, again, another form of, of facilitation of exchange of knowledge in a more cordial or more relaxed setting. We expect people to come from different fields and based on their interests in open and fair uh, prin uh, principles and uh, get the and give a chance as well to people to present their work and increase their visibility and have an impact the uh, you know, uh, outside of the traditional um, conventional publication efforts basically or you know going away from Twitter, coming together into more of a safe environment. <clears throat> and we've been working with the Fair Data podcast uh, folks to develop this. And we'd love to hear from you or if you have any ideas or input on how you, what would be important for you to see to see in this forum. How would you uh, uh, what will make you more interested in using it? So we, we need folks and we, uh, we need input uh, from from users at this point. So we'd love to hear from you. Please uh, give us a, an answer on the survey. Um, another project that we have up and running is that every once in a while, we'll go to the community and present a question about the FAIR implementation practices and ask uh, things like, um, what, what is your PID or persistent identifier uh, solutions? What, how, do you, how do you create or use uh, persistent identifiers for your data sets? And the idea behind here, behind this here is to hear um, if you, if if there was a challenge that you faced when you tried to do something with regards to fair implementation, or maybe you've made a choice recently on, on that and uh, how how is that going? What are your impressions? So we do, we, we ask the community to provide like a two minute, uh, maximum two minutes recording about a question. So answer a specific question for about two minutes. But for those of you who would like to expand on that and get a chance to um, uh, to talk a bit more about uh, the, the 
topic of interest, you uh, we have the Machine Centric Science podcast, and you, you can get in touch with us to to be interviewed on the podcast. So, uh, if this is something you'd be interested in, please uh, go ahead to speakpipe.com and have a look at our choice of challenge uh, of the month uh, that we have. Um, so the, this is about the project, but we our our goal is really to kind of understand how FAIR translates into practice and what it means to the global community. So to that point, we our aim is to include like diverse voices to make sure that FAIR is accessible to a broader audience, to, to, to connect with, with input from a global perspective, right? So we can't work in silos, we can't just build things, uh, um, you know, for those who can and those with the resources and ignore the rest of the world. It doesn't work like that. We've done those mistakes with open science at some point and, and you know, the conversation needs to happen on a global scale for both of open and fair. So, and we also realized that FAIR implementation might look different in real life for researchers across the globe, which is why we're even more keen on getting in, in understanding and including those relatable examples uh, from research practices and from different regions in the world. Um, so that we want to expand beyond you know, geographical um, boundaries, basically. And we're re always looking for that. And um, and we're also wel wel welcoming to, to in or one of our, like, uh, one of our, uh, our initiatives in order to expand the global input is to try to look for fair community champions. And we created this champions program in order to welcome people from everywhere uh, on on um, rolling basis. We are very aware that, you know, voluntary work is a privilege. We're very aware that um, uh, and that burnout is real. People doing extra job, extra work outside of uh, outside of, you know, their, their day jobs. It's it's a privilege in itself. And it, uh, and we don't want to we, we're we're very worry of that and that's why we created this program on rolling on six months rolling basis uh in order to allow for people to come in and out on different different time points whenever it's relevant uh, whenever it's okay for them and suits them and we promote the uh, different actions which we categorize as uh, convey contribute collaborate or co-create so there's a lot of different activities you can do within that realm and uh, things like presenting or talking about uh, fair points work in different contexts or um, engaging in discussions or sharing expertise or th many different things. So if this is interesting uh, for you, please join our Slack. And if you would like to sign up for a champion's, um, uh, a champion's role, then uh, please uh, let us know in the form. I'm going to paste all the links in the chat and I'll send them also to Emma. Um, so with that, I just want to say I hope this piqued your interest and I hope to see uh, and welcome uh, a lot of you and in, in, in the different activities that we have. And please feel free to join the conversation. And again, don't worry, I'll send, out, uh, send all the links. And finally, I want to say major thanks for all of the organization institutes behind supporting our work. Uh, we have SciLife Lab, GoFair ES, San Diego Supercomputing Center, and just I didn't have time to update this slide, but as of the next couple of weeks, uh, it will be also RDA, EOSC, and the Fair Digital Forum. So we're expanding and uh, we're really grateful for everybody. <laughs> so thank you all so much. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask.